Greetings, VC community. It's Mazzy here. And if you watched a couple of days ago, or a day ago, maybe just yesterday, I did uh, Whack-A-Mole. <laughs> Mazzy's Whack-A-Mole, which I call it, is just picking five records. Well, I played those records. I had a great time. I loved it. So I decided to do one just on a quick turnaround here. And um, what's nice is I work at home. And on the other side of this wall is my home office, which has my CDs and my and my old friend's drum kit and some of my guitars and just work stuff. Um, so it's really close here. So sometimes I take breaks during the day and play some music uh, in between. But now it's early evening. I just, for the first time in a in a while ordered a pizza and one of my I'm in Seattle one of my favorite delivery places nearby is a small northwestern Seattle chain called Pagliacci and uh, it's my Pagliacci pizza whoa that would have been bad if it kind of fell over on the floor so I'm gonna do uh, five records whack-a-mole again don't talk with your mouth full Maslov Anyway, I know you always want to, I read the comments on other people's posts about, come on, get into the friggin' music. Okay. But I also got an Italian Barolo, which goes great with um, pizza. So it's an Italian night here. Okay, anyway. Here we go. What, the deal is I just pick five records, close my eyes, or at least reach back, pick them, and just talk about them. I'll keep it fairly brief, okay? Totally. Ah, Sid Barrett Opal. You all know Sid Barrett, original Pink Floyd creator on their uh, first two albums, replaced by, replaced and supplemented, and then replaced by David Gilmore. Whack job turned into a whack job, partly uh, because of um, some psych issues, possibly related to his uh, constant dabbling in uh, psychedelics and LSD. But um, really good records, good music still. Very kind of folky, dirgy, more acoustic bass than the, um, with Pink Floyd. Let's see with this one. Uh, I don't know much to say. You can kind of see the inside. This is a reissue. But anyway, I love Sid Barrett. Anything about Pink Floyd? There you go. Opal. Sid Barrett. There we go. Okay, number two. Oh. <laughs> well, I picked two by mistake. I got grabbed two, but this is ir irony, ironic, because the other day in the first uh, Whack-A-Mole, I uh, pulled... A, um, a record produced by David Bromberg, and now I produced David Bromberg, right? These are, I believe, might be his first two records, solo records. And um, on Columbia, great. Actually, George Harrison is on one of these. Uh, but really great stuff. Again, he's an amazing guitar player. If you ever get to see him, I saw him at the Fillmore in San Francisco a couple years ago. He headlined and the Yorma. Kakonin from Hatuna opened up, but just an amazing. He played with Bob Dylan, and he's played with everyone in that kind of acoustic-y, folky realm, as well as George Harrison. And I'm old enough. This is this is kind of sentimental here. This is like a kumbaya moment, my friends, at the VC. It says Norm, three five seventy two, nineteen seventy two. My girlfriend. I'm old guy here. It says, this being your third hundredth album, play it beautifully in time to come. Loving Judy. Aww. She was my girlfriend at the time. We went out for from 1970 to 1973. Three years as a young kid from the time I was 16 to 19. Now you know how old I am. I'm 64. Just like a Beatles song. But just think, 1972... I had 300 albums. And then the next year in 73, I got my first job working in a record store. I graduated high school in 72. So this is my original copy. Love, love this record um, for a lot of reasons. 
God, a kumbaya moment on Whack-A-Mole episode. Loving this. I think I might just do these from now on, maybe. Maybe not. All right. Indulge me here. Yum. Okay. I'm going now behind the, the doors. I should get remove these doors. It just goes down to Y and Z and then jazz on the bottom. So I'm going to go to the very bottom row. May or may not be jazz depending on where it hits. Um, but not looking again. Oh. Jazz Messenger, Art Blakey. All right. Art Blakey Quartet, a jazz message on impulse. Um, I wonder if when I got these, yeah. 1977, eight and nine, I worked for ABC Records. After I worked in record stores, I got a job at a label uh, working out of the San Francisco office for ABC Records, doing marketing, promotion, merchandising. And what was great about it, unfortunately, uh, what's great about it, I was able to order some records out of their catalog for myself. So I've ordered a bunch of impulse. So they all be 70s pressing, which actually sounded pretty good. Unfortunately, I went through a period like most people my age in the, I'd say the um, early 90s where I sold a bunch of my records. Obviously, ten, the last 10 years have been buying those back. But uh, this is what I kept from uh, those days. And it's with McCoy Tyner, Sonny Stitt, and Art Davis. Really good record. I'm a big jazz fan as well, so. He's a drummer, if you don't know. Art Blakey. Check his music out. You should. He's one of the greatest jazz drummers. There you go. So that's three, right? One, two, three. So here we go again. Um, next. Next. Number four. Ha! Okay, it's a, I'm always amused, even though I have all these records. This is a reissue, but it's a fun, really good record. Um, the Cowboy and the Lady. It's Lee Hazelwood and Anne Margaret. You know, Anne Margaret, the actress, singer, dancer. If, if you don't right now, put this on pause. Go to YouTube and search Bye Bye Birdie and Margaret, and watch the opening sequence of her singing Bye Bye Birdie from the Broadway musical, but from the film version, hysterical, amazing, really kind of campy, but great. And Lee Hazelwood, if you don't know him, you should, because he worked uh, with Nancy Sinatra a lot, as well as other artists, and there's a song, Jackson, and um, God, what's that song, I'm blanking out, Some Velvet Morning, it's a duet with Nancy Sinatra, incredible stuff. I think these are, are these Light in the Attic? Yeah. Light in the Attic is a um, a Seattle reissue label that puts a lot of these kind of things out. Highly recommended if you're into that kind of, I don't want to say campy, but it's just great music. It's kind of poppy, but Lee Hazelwood's got that really low kind of country-ish drawl, you know. Also listen to his version of Boots Are Made For Walking because he worked on that, producing that with Nancy Sinatra. And uh, his version with him singing is really kind of pretty fabulous, so. Check that out. Highly recommend it. All right, one more. You know, I should put, I'm not gonna do it tonight, but this whole side is my Beatles wall. It's Beatles, imports, solo, covers, Apple Records, it's intense. I'll do a special on that, so I won't even pull from that now. But just because I know you can see off of frame all this Beatles stuff, I'm obsessed. But anyway, here we go. One more. Can you see me still? Am I in frame? Oh. Oh. This is one probably most of you don't know, except you'd probably know that name. Barry Maguire. You know Eva Destruction? You don't believe we're on an eve of destruction. Anyway, this is a record on Ode Records, and that was Lou Adler's label, part of A&M Records. And it's actually a really, really good record. So if you see this, I have no idea if it's, if it's rare in terms of, I don't see it a lot in used stores, but I don't know price-wise or Discogs what, what it goes for. This is my original copy from 70, I got it when I, just soon after it came out, so. 
I'm thinking 72, 73, 74 ish. Um, but there's a song called South of the Border, very kind of acoustic, folky, dirgy. He does most all the vocals, I, I believe. And um, the doctor, the doctor, who is the doctor? Remind me. Riley Wild, Wildflower, who is that? Produced by. Da, 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 da. Part of, oh, part of it was produced by Lou Adler, but not all of it. Oh, the photography is Guy Webster. Remember earlier, if you've follow, been following me, Guy Webster just died recently. And I did a tribute of Guy Webster cover photography. He did the Eva Destruction album. He did a lot of the Mamas and Papas album. I didn't realize he did this cover too, obviously. But cool record. Uh... I'm not playing music today for you guys. Oh, and on it. Wow. Musicians on it are Michael Clark, Chris Hillman from The Birds. Also Bernie Ledden, you know, who obviously you know him from The Eagles. And uh, Bernie Ledden, Sneaky Pete, Byron Berline. Oh, man. That whole kind of L.A. rock thing going on there. That country rock thing. Eric Hord, Robert, Rocky Hilton. Anyway, there you go. So that's it for uh, now. I'm gonna go back to my uh, my pizza, my Barolo. You can stop the video now, unless you want to watch me eat and drink wine. It could be like a conceptual artist and just let this go on for like 20 minutes of me eating and drinking. But I won't. Mazzy out. <laughs> 